Empower Radio presents the Dr. Julie Show, all things connected. Break through the illusion of separation, explore the infinite field of possibility, and make connections that inspire. Now, here's your host, Dr. Julie Crawl. Hello and welcome everyone. You're listening to the Dr. Julie Show, All Things Connected. Each week we gather right here to make connections that break through that illusion of separation. And I trust something you hear in the next hour may just inspire you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, to engage in a new kind of political conversation maybe, maybe to expand beyond your current values and move into something more global. Why am I saying all this? Well, a couple weeks ago, I was engaged in a conversation about the current political landscape with a few people that I deeply love and respect. And although I was consciously holding a field of resonance and equanimity, the conversation ended abruptly when it became polarized. And that old phrase, or might I say excuse, was asserted. And I heard, that's why we don't discuss politics or religion. We just don't. So, you can imagine, I sat in disbelief. If family members can't have a healthy discussion, who can? So all day I was intrigued as I thought about culture, religion, and politics. You know, they are all organized around shared values, common purpose, and levels of consciousness. So I wondered, how could we move people out of our polarizing extremes and into the common good? How can we transcend and include our individual values and move into a healthier common agreement? As I was pondering on these questions, the very next day I was introduced to Global Values and our guest. This is a book, Global Values. So I'm so excited to introduce the author to you, I invite you to take a few deep breaths, bring your awareness into this moment, open your mind. Connect with your heart and settle into your essential self as I introduce our guest. Attorney and entertainment industry power player Karen Miller has taken her experience working with local and global markets and applied it to her new book, Global Values, A New Paradigm for a New World, in which she outlines 10 core values that enable people to take transformative action in their own lives and for our own for excuse me for our global community at large and i so appreciate what you've brought to this book karen and i'm so excited to get into it so welcome to our show thank you so much it's a pleasure to be here I'm really Thanks. excited to have this conversation with you. Well, Karen, I am too. I have to say, I um, just usually I am keeping my finger on the pulse of what's out there and, and connecting with people in different ways. And it was so fun. I was introduced to you through a thread about a conversation about really creating this global alliance and, and working with others. So it was so fun to just see you offering up the global values in the greater good and, and just popping into a, a Facebook thread. So I'm really happy to meet you. Hey, Karen, I have a, a perennial question here, a traditional first question that I love to ask our guests because it helps to set our conversation into this more global meme and this global conversation. And so um, I'm going to ask you, can you share with our listeners, what does all things connected mean to you? Oh, that's a great one. And honestly, connection is one of the 10 global values that I identify in my book, Global Values, A New Paradigm for a New World. So all things connected, you know, to me means that everything has a powerful impact on on everything else, our global economies, our cultures, our environments, our political systems, and even our minds, bodies, and spirits. So it's the idea that uh, you know everything that we do has an impact either directly or indirectly on everything else. So what we're putting out there in the world matters. Um, 
so I love that you're that's the basic principle of, of your uh, whole program uh, and and helping people see those connections uh, among all members of humanity and all things that are in material form uh, and helping people bring that into their consciousness so that we can be more conscious of our actions and how they impact the world. Mm. Thank you. You know, that just that very last um, idea that you mentioned is really an important piece for for the message here. It's like we need to move into action. And so I love that you added that in because just really understanding the values and saying, oh, yeah, I agree with them is one thing. And I'll tell you, I just I just saw a video of of someone who is older than both you and I, and he was talking about kind of global values and all the change that needs to happen on the planet. And he said, you know, I'm kind of into my habits. And so my lifestyle's my lifestyle and I'm not going to change much, but this younger generation needs to change. (laughs) And I just kind (laughs) of chuckled at that, like, oh, you are in your place and you don't have to do any shifting of your consciousness or your actions that come from that consciousness because of your habits. It was really an interesting conversation from a a global leader. I thought it was really fascinating. So Karen, tell us, how did this book come about? You are an attorney, you're working in the entertainment business, and I, I would really love to hear who is Karen Miller growing up? How did you get here? And then what inspired you to write this book? What what created the impetus to bring this global values conversation into your life? Sure. Well, it started over 10 years ago. Uh, I've been working on this for quite some time and only published the book last year. Uh, so it's been a long journey for me. Uh, but how it really came about was I was you know, very, like many of us are actively involved in many social transformation groups. Uh, I was working in Washington, D.C. at a major law firm as a technology uh, uh, lawyer, and I started thinking about, you know, how can we use new technologies to connect these many social transformation groups online? Uh, and, you know, so much has been done since then already connecting us online. Um, but I was working as a pro bono counsel for Mary Ann Williamson and uh, helping her form the Peace Alliance. And I was also working at that time with uh, Deepak Chopra and the Alliance for a New Humanity, being a board member uh, on for the Alliance for a New Humanity at that time. And I started seeing all these different initiatives kind of spinning up at that time. Uh, even at that time, Neil Donald Walsh had, had start, was just starting the Humanities team. And even the organizations sounded like they had similar names, Alliance for New Humanity, Humanities Team, Peace Alliance, and all these different groups forming. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be great if somehow we could unify all of these great initiatives, everything from peace to social justice to other things like the green movement and environmental sustainability and uh, all the many sectors of society, whether it be the areas that I work in, in law or the arts or entertainment or science even. So there's just, I I sense this big movement of social transformation and trying to figure out how can we connect all of these people, just like you're, you, we talked about earlier about uh, connection, how do we connect all of these various people, help them feel engaged within this movement, and help people to see this as one movement of social transformation? And at that time, it was, uh, you know, the Bush administration. Um, was promoting the term family values, and I thought, well, I have values, and I know that this movement has values, but they, you know, it's not very well articulated at this point. So, what what are those values? Those core values that are the basis of this social transformation movement, and that's where these ten uh, global values, what I call global values, um, came from. Uh, it's unity, community, life freedom, connection, sustainability, creativity, empowerment, choice, and integrity. 
And I use these values to tell the story of, of unity consciousness and, and this social transformation movement. Nice. Thank you. So, you know, before we get into the individual values, because I'd, I'd love to have a conversation about some of them, I am, I'm really curious about values and, and what you've learned about this as far as really creating common values. Because when I saw your work, I thought, this is an opportunity for us to really transcend and include more of those individual or those organizational or those political, religious or cultural values into this common greater good. But we really have to educate from there. So I'm wondering, you know, a lot of people really hold their values really personal and, and cherish that. How how is this similar or different than global values and what's from your experience karen can we transcend and include our individual values do we change our individual values do we abandon them do we how, how does that work when we're introducing global values I like to think of it like I'm using these values, these 10 values that I just articulated, global values, just to tell the story of unity consciousness. So each individual can, of course, there are all kinds of wonderful values that I haven't articulated in the book. Um, you know, people even value laughter or value, uh, you know, nature or value uh, science or value all kinds of things or their very religion. And but what I'm doing with the, the global values that I, I speak of in the book is to tell the story of unity consciousness. So this is not to exclude other values that people hold, but just to create a framework for this conversation that that can, as you say, cut through these re religious and political and even cultural boundaries that separate us and help us find that sense of connection. While at the same time, people maintaining their, their individual values. But I think the key is to think of this as, you know, there's a concept of, of moral relativism or eth ethical relativism, where that's the idea that uh, personal values can, can't be wrong because they're made relative to social and cultural and histor historical and even personal circumstances. So, you know, of course, we always look at uh, values in context, but Moral relativism is the idea that there aren't necessarily right or wrong uh, values, but I'm taking a more objectivism approach. It goes all the way back to the Stoics of ancient Greece, so this isn't anything new, or Sam Harris talks about this in, in his book, The Moral Landscape, but that there are values that are more helpful to humanity and more helpful to society than others. And I'm taking the position that unity consciousness is helpful to humanity and that this framework of global values is helpful to bring people together and bring build those connections and help people recognize and remember or re-dash member our connection to one another. Yeah, thank you. So really, when we're talking about global values, um, we're just really inviting people almost to do a paradigm shift to really look at the world in a different way. But it doesn't mean it doesn't have to be scary. Um, I love how you wrote your book. Um, really looking at history and looking at evolution and you've you you kind of told this beautiful story to kind of wake us to our inherent unity but you're not saying don't have this value don't think this way you're just really introducing that unity consciousness and inviting them into these common values that we share when we really do believe in unity consciousness Yes, it, you can almost think of it as an umbrella overarching all of us that 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 brings us all together under one banner. Mm. So with this with this banner, with unity consciousness, why is it important for us to be introduced to unity consciousness now on our planet? What is for the most of our listeners are very aware of unity consciousness, but what is your 
um, elevator speech, so to so to speak, here on why now, why is it important for us to understand our inherent unity, to remember it? Well, I think so many of us recognize that the world is in crisis. You know, there's, you just watch the news, there's natural disasters with climate uh, change and man-made disasters and terrorism and refugee crises and poverty and so many challenges that we're facing. And then also, as you just mentioned, divergent viewpoints and very polarized viewpoints in politics and religion. And it's easy to feel that we're more divided than ever today, rather than connected as one body of life. And I think it's so important to adopt this unity consciousness at this time because as we be, you can think of it as like begets like. So if we're fearful of these global challenges and, and try to protect ourselves, we constrict and we become more fearful, more isolated, and more disconnected from each other. But if we shift to unity consciousness and seeing how what we do impacts others, we tend to move more towards love and compassion uh, for others, and that heals us. And we, as we step into the shoes of another, we begin to see our similarities rather than our differences. And that's how we have the possibility of overcoming this dramatic, uh, polarized uh, world that we're currently living in. Yeah. You know, when I sat in my conversation with um, family members that I loved, it was really kind of interesting because the conversation got shut down and I, I brought it back up and just said, can we talk about common values? What's really important to us? Can we just talk about what we share, what we want to see? And when I brought that back to the same group, that was in conversation after I went and refilled a coffee cup and and <laughs> breathed and, and walked away from it. I came back and I said, can we just talk about common values? And there was more tolerance. There was more openness. There was more trust to say, oh, um, really what it did was help those in the conversation really feel the sense of unity again. Um, it brought more safety. It brought more calm into the conversation. It was really helpful to just say, you know, what about our common values and shared purpose? Because literally religion and, and politics, like I said, is really organized around those things. So I think that your book, and I'm going to just, I, I want to make sure our listeners know how to find you and know how to um, get this book here before we take a break. But global values is a really great tool for us to come together to just even explore these. You're not prescribing them. You're really putting them out and then you're, you're saying, hey, go meditate on them. Go talk about them. Go, go, go play with them. And I, and I love that about, about your, the story that you're telling through this book. So, so thank you for that, Karen. And now, so... I'm, I'm talking too much, which is, no, thank I, want, you. <laughs> I want you to talk more. But so literally when we're talking about sharing values and it bringing us together back into unity, you're also putting this into the perspective of history and you've talked about humanity and how we have evolved. And so I just want to really open the conversation into where are we going? What is the trajectory? I know you talked about if we literally don't create radical change, um, radically do things different, if we don't really come together and say, whoa, let's question everything we believe. Let's question what we've been taught. Let's question what we value. And then let's choose, which is another one of your values, choose, choice. Um, our trajectory looks very different if we don't step up into common global values and if we do. So I'm wondering what you might say about that. 
Well, I think that it's more important than ever that we adopt this unity approach and, and this new paradigm, of values paradigm of unity consciousness, because we're already so connected. I mean, just even with the internet and with uh, airplane travel and uh, international commerce, you know, we have connections around the world instantly already. Uh, and so it's much harder today to live in our isolated bubbles of our own family, our own community, or even our own country, because all countries and all people now interact so regularly. So, you know, in the book, I talk about how humanity has kind of shifted on how we view the world or how we make sense of our world from you know mythos or understanding through myth to theos understanding things through religion logos and is reason and and you know brought to us by the greeks of understanding through reason and then through science and i see that we're now moving into an, a new era of what's been called hollows or a holistic perspective you can see this even in holistic medicine or holistic healing or holistic i mean it, it reaches into just about everything now and i'm saying why don't we think about holistic values as well um, that could be beneficial just as in medicine you may go to a regular medical doctor um, for certain things and and which is very beneficial but you may also then go to a holistic doctor to take another approach another angle to your own healing i'm suggesting this other approach to healing humanity and healing the world uh, through this uh, alternative values system mm. Thank you, Karen. I love that because that's what it is all about is bringing us that remembering is bringing us back into our wholeness because there is no separation like we talked about. Thank you for that. You know, I um, this is a good place then to talk about three of these values and I would love to hear you have a conversation about them because um, to me they speak of our wholeness and yet they're you write about them all in a different context. So if someone's just looking at this list of values, they might not be able to discern or differentiate what you're meaning in the differences. So when you talk about, I'm going to do one, two, and five, you talk about unity, community, and connection. And those three are all really about this worldview of, of unity and helping us understand this inherent wholeness of, of who we really are. So can you speak about those three values, unity, community, and connection? Sure. So unity is, like we've been talking about, the overarching principle of all of these global values. But it's the concept that together we make up one body of life. And I say that our diversity is a celebration of all that is, and together we are whole. So unity can be seen as our essential state of being. And together, if you think of us like each individual person is a cell making up one human body, um, together, each of us as individual cells make up one body of life. So that diversity is really important in a, you know, we've heard the term, the tapestry of life, all the many colors coming together to make a much more interesting and also much more um, strong and strength, um, substantial tapestry uh, of many different threads. Um, and so, I talk about with the unity uh, consciousness that that's just a shift in perspective, just as you're saying with connection, that we're already connected. It's just shifting our perspective from seeing ourselves as isolated and separate to being connected to one another. Um, and once we do make that individual shift, we it's much more, uh, it's easy to become compassionate for others because we see that connection. So community, on the other hand, is, well, so unity, you can see that as our natural state, but community is a choice. We choose to connect with others and to cooperate on our individual, you know, daily lives at the local level, our cities, our states, and even our nations. So if you 
you can see that. If, I mean, I guess we can take that analogy of the one body of life in your cell. There are many different ways that a cell can work within the body of life. Of, in a human body or within the body of life. So we choose our community. And, and what I say about community is because we are one, individuals acting in isolation are often ineffective. And by joining forces with others, we realize our full potential. So uh, that then builds into the, the idea of uh, connection. In yeah. connection, it's just what we already talked about, that we're all connected, we're all one body of life. I don't know, we have yeah, time for that. more connection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, I really appreciate that. And I think there's so much more to that we could say about connection because it's the whole thing. But I do love that this unity consciousness is kind of like the world view. It's kind of like... Um, having us see through a different lens and then i love how you said communities of choice it's kind of like gathering and then this connection thing feeds into all of it it's like understanding that even um, economies and institutions everything is so connected that that our actions are relevant and they affect the whole this is a great conversation you've got so many more of these that i think are important for us to kind of chew on and really hear so we are going to take a quick break when we return more on global values with karen miller Have you ever lost a cat? And have you ever wanted to get your cat back after you lost it? Hi there, I'm Andrew Hoffman. I went on this website called inventnow.org. Then I decided to make an invention of my own. It's called the Lost Cat Magnet Invention. So you can get your cat back after you lost it. Just turn it on and lost cat stick to it. That's a good cat. If your cat was hiding up in a tree, it won't be up a tree anymore. It will be stuck to the lost cat magnet. And sometimes they fly toward you in the air. Just listen to one satisfied cat. <coughs> See, that's proof. You should go to the inventnow.org website too. But just remember one thing. Don't do a lost cat magnet. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, the National Inventors Hall of Fame Foundation, and the Ad Council. Come to the forest. It's a place not so far away. A place where you don't have to mow the lawn. Or babysit. I saw lizards and squirrels and bugs. Ladybugs, caterpillars. It's really cool, actually. A place where you don't have to make time for free time. Lots and lots of kinds of species here. Out here, you may even meet the mysterious creature known as the other you. The enchanted you. It's magic what flowers do. The adventurous you. My favorite tree. Yes. Is that one. The free to be me you. <laughs> Ask your parents to take you to this not so far away place. Come to the forest where the other you lives. But first, stop by discovertheforest.org, a public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Do you get tired of styling your hair every day? And do you want a good hairstyle every day? Hi, I'm Sarah Schuster. I went on a website called inventnow.org, and after that, I decided to invent something too. Something called the Insta-Do. Just imagine, you just put it over your head like a helmet does, and you pick your hairstyle with the buttons on the side, and you can have instant hairstyle in seconds. People like it. People like Jeff Bart. I like it. And people like Kenneth. It's a summer thing, and it fits over your head, and it's great. Thank you, and Kenneth. You should go to inventnow.org, and it could help you come up with your own invention. After all, look at me on the radio now. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. 
Brought to you by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, the National Inventors Hall of Fame Foundation, and the Ad Council. Now, back to the Dr. Julie Show, all things connected on Empower Radio. Welcome back. Hey, if you're inspired by our conversation today, I invite you to share it with others and listen to it again. Please visit our website, thedrjulieshow.com, where you'll find the archive link for this show, as well as listing of upcoming guests. And there's so many amazing people we're having on this fall. So I encourage you to go there again. That's thedrjulieshow.com. And stay connected all week on our Facebook page, All Things Connected with Dr. Julie, where we continue the conversation. Today, we're talking about global values with Karen Miller. And you can find more about her at www ournewevolution.org. Again, that website is ournewevolution.org. And you can also find her on Facebook under Global Values Movement, as well as the Our New Evolution One page and, and her author page as well under her name, Karen Miller. So lots of ways to contact Karen. So do that. And Karen, I, I, I'm going to give you this opportunity, I think, before I go back into these values, because I, I love the name of One, Our New Evolution. And why don't you tell our listeners, what is this organization you call new, Our New Evolution? Well, I came up with this organization as, as the idea is to be in uh, a nameless, faceless organization that could serve to unite the many great efforts that are going on in social transformation. You know, we talked about the, the peace groups, the social justice groups, the environmental sustainability groups, and me seeing global values as a common thread that could help to serve to unite these many efforts. So our new evolution uh, promotes the great work of other people that reflect global values. Hopefully it can become an organization that is a, a unifier of, of these many sectors of social transformation. I see, you know, us evolving from a state of separation and isolation to one of cooperation and collaboration. So it really is an evolution of humanity from uh, a fear state uh, consciousness to a more love-based consciousness based on unity. Uh, and I see it as really just as an evolution to match ourselves, to evolve together with life itself, and that our purpose is to evolve life itself. Uh, you know, because we have our self-awareness, we have the choice to align with life and how it's evolving or to be a hindrance to life. Um, but oftentimes, if we choose not to align with the holistic nature of life itself, then we, you know, we're, we feel pain, we feel fear, and we create more fear and more pain in the world. Mm. You know that I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because life, aligning with life, allowing life to flow through us, evolving with life. You you mentioned the world life, and that is your third global value that you write about. And I have to say, Karen, I really appreciate how you wrote that chapter. Um, it takes the conversation that so many people get polarized about with God and religion and the names of God and, and what does all that mean? And you're just talking about this flow of life. And so I'm just going to let you talk about it in, in your own words, but I, I just really want to encourage everyone. If you want some language and some unifying way to look at this impulse of creation and life that's flowing through us, pick up global values. So Karen, tell us a little bit more about this value of life. Yeah, so I saw that the same thing that we were just discussing, that that religious terms can often cause people to just stop talking. It stops the conversation. Um, and so I use life oftentimes interchangeably with, with the term God. Uh, you know, in, in the more new age movement, people talk about energy and the flow of energy and the vibes that they're giving out or what have you. But I tend to, I move towards thinking about it as, well, this is just life and we can align with life 
um, that in life energizes and moves all things, uh, or we can be a hindrance to life, as I was talking about. But how I describe it in the book is, you know, in the beginning, there was the Big Bang and, and life moved out into form in matter. And even in the Bible, in, in, in the book of John, it says, in beginning there was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God, and all things came into being through Him. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. So I see this as, you know, vibrations burst forth and traveled out through all of matter. And is continuing to burst forth and travel out through all matter, uh, evolving itself uh, to experience uh, experience itself in matter. And so as because we are self-aware, we have the choice then, like I said, to align with that uh, and that which supports life or not. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that goes to the sense of, of, of freedom and, and that we have the, or at least the illusion of free will, uh, we either have free will or the illusion of it to make these choices of how we're going to be in the world, how we're going to align with life and how we're going to act uh, in our own individual lives. Good. Thank you for bringing that up because those are two that I think would be valuable for us to discern and differentiate again because you speak of these two values, freedom and choice. Help us understand what's the difference in freedom and choice. So you might think that they, <laughs> they go hand in hand. So I think of freedom as it's just kind of almost a, a state of being. It's a natural, I say it's a natural right and that democratic principles are the foundation of our social justice. But we have the free will or at least the illusion of free will that allows us to make these choices and create our lives. And this freedom is necessary to help us to exercise our free will. So it affords us the opportunity to create life as we choose. So on the individual level, we we can make our everyday choices. Um, am I going to do this or do that? Am I going to buy this or do that? Am I going to say this or that to another person? Um, and then in the um, public sphere, we have the freedom to make collective agreements and those agreements with others create our social structures that reflect our values and choices. So democracy is the principle that upholds those freedoms and equal rights and opportunity for all and give us the possibility to make those choices in our own lives um, and actively participate in those collective agreements and the formation of our social structures that thereby create our world. Mm. So I, I thank you for that. I, I, I see freedom we're, we're talking about global values we're talking about holding this in our collective and so i can see how those um work together but they're very different that we we uphold the value of freedom for all and then we create these agreements that that help us to move within that structure and then we have choice within it which is really good so thank you for differentiating that i think that's really helpful you know one of the the values that I think most people won't be surprised about um, in our in our world today when we talk about a lot of our global challenges is this issue of sustainability. We're all looking at the the green movement, the environmental crisis. We're all starting to talk about sustainable. We, our kids are teaching us to recycle, repurpose, reuse. And, you know, so there's, there's some important concepts that are coming here. But I, I really want you to speak on that because when we as a collective, again, when we as this unified body of humanity adopt this value of sustainability, it really changes everything. It really changes how we do life. We have to rethink so many things. And people say, well, I'm I'm green or I'm, I recycle, I repurpose, or I shut off the lights when I leave the room. But really the conversation is bigger. What does that really mean for all of us as a collective? So can you speak a little bit about sustainability? 
Yeah, I think, so. you know, environmental sustainability is, is part of the picture and it's so important um, given our, uh, you know, global environmental crises. But I'm talking about sustainability, taking it a step further to sustainable practices across the board, a broader view to, to move to a more holistic perspective in our personal interactions, in our communities, and our nations. So I say that sustainable practices are essential to maintain the flow of life, like we just talked about, for the individual, the community, and the world. So unsustainable practices would be blocking the evolution of life or blocking energy for others or doing things that we can't continue in the long run. Um, they have a very short lifespan. So this is moving from short-term individual gain at the expense of the whole to long-term sustainable practices for all. So we're moving from a kind of Darwinian survival of the fittest competition uh, to a more sustainable collaborative approach. Uh, I love in the, I don't if anyone's heard of the compassion games, but it's uh, a game to be the most compassionate uh, and you get points for that, but it, they use the survival of the kindness and kindest instead of the survival of the fittest. Um, but looking at that approach, like a, just from uh, from individual short-term game to long-term sustainable practices for the whole. Mm. So really that helps us shift our priorities where we're always looking at what's in the greater good of the whole. And sometimes we need to make intentional choices that may not be for the greater good of me, um, but it really grounds us in that holistic thinking. Thank you for that. I think that's so important when we really shift this perspective, this worldview into unity consciousness, it does, the, the basic value is what is in the greater good of the whole. Thank you for that. That that leads right to that empowerment one too, because all of a sudden now we're looking at what's in the greater good of the whole. So we're looking at our neighbors, we're looking at um, our coworkers, we're looking at other nations, we're looking at refugees, we're looking at starving children, we're looking at violence, we're looking at so much more when we start thinking like that. So let's talk about empowerment because that fits in with the choices and the sustainability and, and what's the greater good. So what do you mean by empowerment and, and what is that global value? So with empowerment, I'm looking at both empowering ourselves but if we look at ourselves as connected to others, as one body of life, then we also seek to empower others. So it's empowering ourselves and thereby also empowering others as one body of humanity. And together then we realize our true potential and our true power together. So, uh, you know, it, it starts with the individual you know, that, that we have to overcome our fears of really putting ourselves out in the world. By writing this book, I had to overcome my fear of who am I to write this book? Why do I, who do you think you are to give advice to humanity? You know, like, who am I not to? Uh, that I've, you know, I've taken this journey and it's empowerment of ourselves to speak our truth of what aligns with the greater forces of life and this holistic approach. But then we also realize that once we empower ourselves that we are even more empowered and more strong and, and more effective if we empower others and work in collaboration with others. Um, but the key is that it's really important for us to claim our power both individually and collectively because if we don't, it's really clear that others will and others will, you know, who may not be aligned with this holistic approach, this holistic viewpoint, um, work to polarize us further. Um, so true empowerment encompasses the whole of the individual and the collective society, and it's just based on cooperation rather than domination. 
Karen, what do you mean by claim our power? I think that's a really important piece here. I just want to pause into that and let you speak a little bit more because when you say if we don't claim it, others will, and they might be aligned with that polarization, it makes it really drives it home. So I'd love to hear you speak more on claiming our power. Yeah, I mean, I think goes back to the discussion of life and, and energy. I think that each of us as human beings have life force pulsating through us and coming out through the world. And as we meditate and become more aligned with that, we become more powerful in manifesting uh, what we want to see in the world. So I think that all of us are powerful and, and our, our own individual fears are what hold us back. You know, Marianne Williamson uh has said in her book, A Return to Love, that our greatest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. It is our light and not our darkness that most frightens us. So it's really claiming our light, claiming our true essence, um, overcoming our fears to uh, realize that the love that and the essential essence of love that of who we really are. Mm. So, you know what that does for me, that moves us into the creativity value because I'm, I'm hearing as I'm hearing you say, claim your power. Um, I'm, I'm also hearing that it's not only our right to have this expression, this freedom of expression, but really it's, it's our, our sole purpose to create with creation, right? To create with life, to have this expression of who we are as individuals. So I love how that flows into that. Let's talk about creativity. And I love your conversation in the book. I just want to remind people that they can find you at ournewevolution.org and find more about this little book, Global Values, because really it helps you think outside of the box. It helps you really evaluate how we've been really taught and conditioned to believe values that come from the worldview of separation and really break that open and shift that paradigm for us. So let's go to creativity and self-expression because I love that topic. It's my favorite. <laughs> sure. So creativity, you know, one naturally kind of thinks of the arts uh, and being creative and, and how we express ourselves and artistic expression or creativity in writing a book or creativity uh, in, in those types of artistic endeavors. But I use it to say, you know, we are creators. We are the architects of our, wor of our world. So it goes far beyond the arts uh, and just that we are, we are creators and, and we create everything that's around us and that is not just a nice to have that's our purpose in life is to create and express ourselves in our unique and diverse ways that support the lives of others i think that that extra bit at the end that support the lives of others is really important because it's not creating at the expense of the whole uh, or like we talked about with sustainability you know for short-term individual gain but creativity to uh, allow life to express itself more fully in the world, to allow our individual selves to be expressed more fully in the world. So I see it as, you know, our our will and our state of mind and our, our fundamental values produce our actions in the world and those actions thereby create the world that reflects our intentions and our and our values. So as we said, fear creates more fear, love creates more love. And so the key is to create a collaboration with life itself and with others and to evolve life as a species. Nice. I, I hope our listeners are really hearing how all of these are really weaving together. And, and you talk about a tapestry and weaving the tapestry of who we are as individuals, but I'm really seeing the tapestry of your global values that you've identified really weaving and supporting one another these values build on each other and and you can't hardly separate any of this so thank you for that wisdom that came through your own creativity when you were really pulling these these values down into form and and giving word and voice and and expression to them so thank you for that i love also how you talk about 
you know, really supporting all of life, all of us. So that takes us to this last one. And and I, I can see this totally weaving in too, Karen, because we've <laughs> talked about all of these. And I, you know, before we talk about what can our listeners do, I want to ask that question before we close today. What can our listeners do if they want to step up and do one thing? But that just is really in sync with this last value as well. So let's talk about integrity. What is integrity and and how do we express that as a global value? So with integrity, we often think of personal integrity of being being my word in the world, being your word and doing what you say you will do. But I use it for, in that sense for personal integrity and also on a larger perspective of everything is integrated. Everything is complete and undivided parts of a whole. And when we remember our oneness and our connection, we act with integrity to the benefit of all. So we need to look at our personal in- integrity, you know, matching our values to our actions to our values and being our word, um, but then also our collective integrity, just keeping in mind, you can use integrity uh, in the same sense as, as unity uh, and unity consciousness, that everything is intertwined, everything is whole, everything is connected uh, in one body of life. Um, so when we are in integrity with others, when our actions match our agreement others, we are integrity with others. Um, when we are integrity with ourselves, when our actions match our values, and we are integrity from a larger perspective, when our values reflect the integrated nature and oneness of all things. Mm. Thank you, Karen. So. I'm feeling the fullness of these and just holding them with really this exquisite beauty. They all just kind of flow and move in and out. There's a a really beautiful essence about these values. So we're talking with listeners who are really in alignment with a lot of these. Um, I know our listeners and, and they get the unity consciousness piece. And like you mentioned, there's so many individual organizations there's so many opportunities to serve this greater whole there's so many different movements on our planet and now we have movements of movements and we have people trying to really synthesize and create this beautiful tapestry within these movements within these organizations so from your best advice and from your perspective of of where you sit in the world and who you've worked with what do we do with these global values? How do we reach out in the world and really use these global values? How do we express them? What are our next best steps? What would you recommend to somebody who says, okay, now what do I do with them? I want to take just a small step today. What do I do? Sure. Well, it somewhat ironically in the book the call to action is is rather inaction it's going within meditate and mindfulness and 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 transforming our inner selves taking a look at our own individual values uh, and aligning them with this global perspective Uh, i suggest in the book that meditating just on rather than using a sanskrit mantra using the global values to bring yourself back uh, when your mind starts wandering in meditation. So that's one thing. Uh, I think as we go within, you know, the shadows within ourselves and aspects of ourselves that we've ignored tend to bubble up and we can consciously work on them. And as we transform ourselves, then we begin to have those conversations with others from a non-secular values-based perspective and connect with others who are polarized from us um, and, and on a different level, on a, on a, on a high Higher level of unity consciousness. Um, so I, I'd say that you know some easy things that you can do. Uh, of course, I start with meditation. But if that's too much, just even start with making eye contact with others and smiling. I noticed for myself many years ago when I was suffering from anxiety and depression, I started running and I started feeling better about myself and I started smiling more and I noticed that people smile back and it instantly created a connection with others that was really profound for me. So simple things just like smiling at others and 
helping others to have a good day <laughs> are really beneficial. It sounds really simplistic, but it works. Mm. Well, thank you for that. I know my daughter who lives in New York City has done the same thing of, you know, walking down this busy, busy street and people are rushing and pushing and moving. And and she says, I just stop and I smile at people. And and it's amazing the transformation that happens. So thank you for that. So what about leaders, Karen? So those listeners that might be leading individual organizations, leading in their communities, leading in their workplace, um, maybe even leading nations here. What would you say as far as the application of global values for those that are wanting to come together to create greater coherence? What might you suggest for them? I'd suggest adopting global values uh, and or at least adopting, uh, you know, non-secular uh, ethics and that uh, help us to bridge the gaps across religious and cultural uh, and political boundaries. I think that uh, what we can do is active, compassionate listening to the other, um, to people that we feel are so different than us. Uh, If we listen to their story and open the door to hear the suffering of others, I think uh, all human beings are suffering and lots of the horrible things that are manifesting in the world are due to individuals suffering and feeling unheard and feeling disempowered, uh, such as terrorism or um, racial conflict or even police brutality here in the United States. And I think that if we have compassionate listening for the other um, and we start that conversation on with a values-based conversation so that people feel heard, that's how we're going to transform our world. Mm, Thank you for that. So, Karen, we just have a few minutes left in our program, and I really appreciate having you here and sharing this um, wisdom with us, bringing it forward for our world. It, It really can be a unifying tool for humanity and for individuals and organizations working in the field here. So with just a couple minutes left, is there what, what one message might you want to deliver to humanity today? What one thing would you want to say to our listeners? I mean, if you could have a billboard in every great city of our, of our world, what might you say? Well, the biggest takeaway is to move from a state of fear to love and choose that over and over and over again. Um, Move from competition at the expense of the whole to collaboration for the benefit of all, this unity approach. And as we transform ourselves together, we can transform our communities, our social structures, and the world. So for yourself, please do get a copy of the book um, and sign up for the newsletter at ournewevolution.org. For the world, uh, please spread the word. If you have quotes or your own work, put the hashtag global values after it if you feel that it reflects these global values. Uh, There's a YouTube channel for Our New Evolution, and I put other people's videos on that if they reflect, uh, reflect global values and collaborate. I'm looking for partnerships um, through Our New Evolution to promote initiatives that reflect global values. There's the inaugural Global Values Summit, uh, the first ever summit coming up uh, to continue this discussion of global values in Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, September 10th. Uh, And you can find that both on ournewevolution.org and on Facebook uh, as well. But I invite you all to join that conversation conversation to come to Salt Lake City and to participate in this conversation with people uh, from all over the world, actually, who are coming to have this global values conversation. Nice. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much for visiting us today and sharing this work with us. And I so appreciate you sharing it with everyone. This is just such an important topic. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. Oh, you bet. And listeners, remember together, we are creating connections for the greater good of the whole. So until next time, I'm sending you a world of love. Bye for now. 